All right, guys. Today we're working on this PS4 controller. It's quite nice, actually. Um, so the problem with this is uh, the left clicker. I think that's referring to this um, L3. So we'll uh, we'll pull this apart, have a look, and I'll show you how to fix this. So the easiest way to pull this apart is just four screws here. She can take it all apart. I'm just using a uh, small Phillips. I don't know what the size of this is, but it's quite tiny. They're readily available, so you can get one of these. So there's four screws. Put them aside. <coughs> there we are. This comes off. There's a ribbon cable here. It comes off. Close that off. Okay. So to take this off, um, the little battery cradle just tabs on the side. You can take that off. This one here. Just pull it out. Now, before anything, I need to remove um, these little wires that go to the motor. These are for when the remote vibrates. So I need to take those off. Just It just makes it a little bit easier. Let's grab my little soldering iron. <coughs> Here we are, and now the screw that holds the motherboard to the controller comes off, and this just lifts out these tabs on the side of it. You might have to just push away for it to come off. Yeah. Okay, so that's out. So it said left clicker, so I'm assuming it's this one here. So it will be this one right here. So before I go any further, I'm going to just put a mark on it so I don't get confused. It's this one there, one there, one there. Okay, so I'll set up my little vice that I'm going to take this off on. And um, and I'll show you how to remove these. So it's easy. Just desolder all of this. Um, take this off. I've got the new one there. Uh, and then we'll put that on. So let me get back to you once I set this up on the jig. Okay, so I've got you set up on the jig. I've put some of these um, aluminium tape around here just so these components in this area on the reverse side of the board that might fall off while doing this. So. The process that I do is, um, first of all, I grab my soldering iron and my flux. So, so what I do is I apply them here on on all of the points. What I need to remove um, this just allows it allows the solder just to flow a little bit better. And then what I do is I grab my soldering iron with new flux as well as um, so flux is applied already so new solder and I just go over the pins just applying new new solder the reason to do this it just it just makes it a little bit easier when I'm trying to take the joystick out just it reflows it a lot better just hold it there just so the new solder can get sucked in a little bit. And while I'm doing that I'm working it back and forth. Just 
This doesn't take too long. So all of the pins. Just take your time when you're doing this. Don't rush. You can damage them if you are rushing. <coughs> now what I do is I grab my hot air gun. Set it at 420. At 4 litres of four milliliters of airflow and I just work it so here's my iron get that underneath and what I do is I just go over this let's take your time when you're doing this Work it all the way through. And just grab a pair of pliers, grab them at the bottom, and it should come out. There you are. So there's the port, there's the board. It fell off my jig, so let me just reset that. Okay, so there it is. It's out. Easy as that. So now what I do is um, I have my new one. So let me grab my new port. There's my new port. So there's the old one. There's the new one. So now what I do is I just reheat the board and place this in. Now before I do that, what I try and do is um, I try and realign everything. So I try and have a look at if everything, all the legs are going to line up perfectly. So you see this one here is not wanting to line up. Fully. So this one here, I just push it back, and then I redo this. Have a look. Oops, this way. Mhm. Mm so that's good. Now, um, just use this again. So there we are, and now what I do is get my solder sucker as well as my iron, apply a bit of flux to these joints. Now usually I can do this with a, uh, the heat gun as well as applying heat at the bottom and then just slot the port in, but I want to show you how it can be done through a uh, soldering iron as well. So let me just position you a little bit better. I'll pause you not come. Okay, so I've got you positioned better. Now I'll just come in with my soldering iron. Now I just go over the pads again. And I come in with my soldering iron and my solder sucker. This one. So you can see how the solder sucker just sucks it all back up. So just hold it there for a couple of seconds and then
trying to show you and not block the camera at the same time. I should get a bigger jig to hold these boards because I'm using this vise at the moment. Don't worry about all of this extra flux, they all get cleaned up then. So the solder sucker that I'm using can be found at Jcar, AliExpress, eBay. So it's it's not that expensive anyway. There's just one more left. So when it's it's being stubborn, so what I do is apply a bit of flux to it, and then I do that. So that's all good to go. Now before I move forward, um, I'm going to clean this. So what I use for cleaning is you can use isopropyl. I prefer acetone because it gets in there quite. Well, um, don't use too much of this if you are planning to use this, as this can damage the tracks if you are rubbing away at it too hard. So that's it. So that's just a little bit of flux and residue on top. Right, so that's it. Okay, so now what I do is I grab my new one. So that's the right, that's the old one. It's the old one. I don't need that. I need this one. So I've got two here. So this is the old one because it has those solder points on it. So this is the new one here. Um, and what do you do is you just line these up. You can't go wrong with lining these up. Um, just because these the clicker on this side. Now I'm going to remove these tape now. I don't need this. So this is the tape that I was talking about. So these little resistors and capacitors that are at the bottom of this it's just aluminium foil tape that I use nothing special you can find these at Bunnings I'll try and put a link to what I use on uh, the description so it comes off okay so that's off and let me just clean this side as well. So same thing, acetone. Just give it a light rub. Right, nice and clean. And I'll just get rid of these these blue markers that are on here. I might stop it from sitting properly okay so there you are and let's line this up so that goes there okay so that's bent out
Okay, so do this in first. And it goes this way. Yep. So that lines up. And you just force it through. Oops. Okay, so there you are. And now solder this back into place. Okay, so what the way I do this is again get a bit of flux. Apply it to these joints. So the solder flux just allows solder to flow a little bit better and adhere to the, the points that it needs to solder to. Right. <coughs> Now, come in with my solder. Okay, I try and do this top left hand corner first. That's because I feel like that's the one that holds everything together. Okay, just hold it there. Let the solder suck in to the joint. Be patient. Now if you are trying to do this and you are wanting to learn, I would say um, invest in a proper soldering iron first. Now there are cheapos out there, but I guess it's only going to do you good um, if you get a proper soldering iron, like a 60 watt or something, that's the one I'm using. So if you, if you are trying to do this with a not so great soldering iron, you will have problems. Okay, so that's all done. Now, just I like to go over the the points again, just tadly, just so I can be sure that all of these points are definitely soldered in. Cool. There it is. Now come in with my acetone or isopropyl. You can use isopropyl if you want, but I prefer this. Um, then just give it a good clean. Here you are. So there's a close up of it. Okay, so. There's the other side. So clicker works. Now what I'll do is I'll position you back on the tripod and um, and I'll show you the assembly and we'll test it all out. So the assembly process is pretty much the reverse of this. So if I grab this, put that back on. Yeah, so everything clicks on, clicks off. Fine. Place that back on. Grab my tweezers. So this is for your touchpad. And this just slides in. Okay, so we've got the cradle in, we've got this ribbon connector back in. Let's screw this down. Everything's sitting nice and flush. Okay. Cool. Now we'll place this connector back on. Now if you're having trouble remembering which way this goes, what I tend to do is if I forget, um, I have a look inside where the the pins are sticking out and then on the ribbon cable you also have a look at which side the pads are. So in theory that, that's the way it should go. So that just clicks into that, slides into that. Um, or what you could do is just take a photo of it before disassembling it. Alright, so that's on. Now let's get this battery back on. So I think I think for those that are not doing this daily, um, and if you just want to take a photo of what you're doing, um, that might help you. 
So there we go. And everything should just clip back in. Yep, the controller is flashing away. And now just these four little screws that hold the controller housing together. This is actually quite a nice controller, so this would be worth replacing the part for and, and saving it. These controllers don't really break down that often, like they stop working or something like that, unless it's been thrown across the room or something like that. Um, they are quite robust. So I've not come across one that uh, that needed extensive repair, so there you are. So that's it. Remember this is the one that we replaced. Lift clicker, so now it's clicking away. Nice. Okay, now we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and get someone to test this out and then we can hand it back to the customer. Hopefully this has helped somebody out there and thank you for watching.